be clear that the word intimidation with respect to the constitutional protection is one that directs a threat to a person with the intent of placing the victim in fear of bodily harm or death. Prosecutors who investigate these cases know the Supreme Courts. This is a, a, a very famous uh, leading case. Pro prosecutors do, but, but parents don't, General Garland. Do you, do you think that a parent who looks at the 13 different federal crimes that your Justice Department has identified they might be subject to and prosecuted for, like making annoying phone calls, do you think that they're going to feel that they're welcome to speak up at a school board meeting? How about this one? They could be prosecuted for using the internet, I guess that would be Facebook, in a way that might cause emotional distress to a victim. Is that a, is that a crime of violence? Senator, I haven't seen the memo that you're Why talking haven't about. Why haven't you? And I don't, I, and I, I, even from the description, it doesn't sound like it was addressed to parents. But if you No, it, was, it wasn't addressed to parents. It was addressed to prosecutors. That's the problem. Why haven't you seen the memo? I, I, I don't know why I haven't. I don't look at every. I have. I do not get every memo that every U.S. attorney uh, sends out. But uh, if you're wait, wait, wait a minute. Don't, don't. I, I, don't, I just want to be sure I understand this. This, this is a memorandum that collects 13 different federal crimes parents could be charged with. It has United States Department of Justice on the top of it. And you're telling me you haven't seen it? Who's the memo from, Senator? The United States Department of Justice, United States Attorney for the District of Montana. I have not seen a memo from the District of Montana. I not high enough priority for you? It's not, that's not the question. I don't... It is I, the question. Answer my question. Is it not a high enough priority for you when you're threatening parents with 13 different federal crimes? I, These aren't crimes of violence. You've testified today. You're focused on violence. That's not what your U.S. attorneys... They work for you. That's not what they're saying. You haven't seen it because it's not a high enough priority, or what? A question of priority. No one has sent me that memo, so I haven't seen it. What do you mean no one has sent you the memo? You run the United States Department of Justice, do you not? There are 115,000 employees of the Department of Justice. Indeed, and you are in charge of every one of them. And, and this was a sufficiently important case that you issued a memo. You, over your signature, issued a memo involving the FBI and the Department of Justice in local school boards, local school districts. Your U.S. attorneys are now threatening prosecution with 13 different crimes, but it's not a high enough priority for you. It got lost in the mix. I'll send again. I've never seen that memo. It was That's what concerns me. me, General Garland. Well, it wasn't sent to me. I hope you will assure your constituents that what we are concerned about here is violence and threats of violence. That only leads That's me to conclude, way. General That's Garland, all I can conclude from this is either that you're not in control of your own department or that more likely what I think to be the case is that you knew full well that this is exactly the kind of thing that would happen. When you issued your memo, when you involved the Department of Justice and all of its resources, and the FBI and all of its resources in local school boards and local school districts, you knew that federal prosecutors would start collecting crimes that they could use against parents. You knew they would advise state and local officials that these are all of the ways parents might be prosecuted. You knew that that was the likely outcome, and that's exactly what's happened. And we're talking about parents like Scott Smith, who's behind me over my shoulder. This is a father from Loudoun County, Virginia. Here he is at a school board meeting. He was forcibly restrained. He was assaulted. He was arrested. Why? Because he went to an elected school board meeting. He's a voter, by the way. He went to an elected school board meeting to raise the fact that his daughter was assaulted, sexually assaulted, in a girl's restroom by a boy. This is what happened to him. Now, you testified last week before the House that you didn't know anything about this case. I find that extraordinary because the letter that you put so much weight on, the letter that's now been retracted, it cites this case. It cites Mr. Scott's case directly. There's a news article cited in the letter. It's discussed in the letter, but you testified you just couldn't remember it. Maybe this will refresh your memory. Do you think people like Scott Smith, do you think parents who show up to complain about their children being assaulted ought to be treated like this man right here? Parents who show up to complain about school boards are protected by the First Amendment. Do you think that they ought to be prosecuted they in the different protected. ways that your U.S. attorneys are identifying? If what they're doing is complaining about what the school board is doing, policies, curriculum, anything else that they want to, as long as they're not committing threats of violence, then they should not be prosecuted, and they can't be. Let me ask you about this. Several of my Democrat colleagues have today, just today in this hearing, multiple times have compared parents who show up at school board meetings, like Mr. Smith here, 
have compared them to criminal rioters. You think that's right? You think that a parent who shows up at a school board meeting, who has a complaint, who wants to voice that complaint, and maybe she doesn't use exactly the right grammar, you think they're akin to criminal rioters? Do you agree with that? I do not, and I do not remember any senator here compare, making that comparison. Oh, really? These people are just like the folks who came here on January 6th and in, in, in the riot at the Capitol? I don't think it was, they were referring to the picture that you're showing there. Well, I certainly would hope not, but they were referring to parents who go to school board meetings. Mr. Smith is a parent who went to a school board meeting. I'll leave it at this, General Garland. You have weaponized the FBI and the Department of Justice. Your U.S. attorneys are now collecting and cataloging all the ways that they might prosecute parents like Mr. Smith because they want to be involved in their children's education and they want to have a say in their elected officials. It's wrong. It is unprecedented to my knowledge in the history of this country, and I call on you to resign. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Senator Cruz. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Ms. Monaco, I want to come back to this extraordinary letter and memorandum that the Attorney General of the United States issued yesterday. Practically every day brings new reports about this administration weaponizing the federal bureaucracy to go after political opponents. Frankly, I don't think we've ever seen anything like it in American history. I mean, for those of us who missed the McCarthy era, I guess this president is intent on bringing it to us but with new force and new power and new urgency, unlike anything we've ever seen. Are you aware of any time in American history when an attorney general has directed the FBI to begin to intervene in school board meetings, local school board meetings? I'm not aware, and I'm not aware that that, and that is not going on. Let me be very, very Really, this clear. isn't about local school board meetings? That's not the subject of the memorandum? I thought that was in the memorandum. The memorandum is quite clear. It's one page, um, and it asks um, the uh, U.S. attorney community and the FBI special agents in charge to convene state and local law enforcement partners um, to ensure that there's an open line of communication to address threats, to address violence, um, and that's the appropriate role of the Department of Justice to make sure that we are addressing uh, criminal conduct and violence. At, at local school board meetings. Let me just ask you this. Is parents waiting sometimes for hours to speak at a local school board meeting to express concerns about critical race theory or the masking of their students, particularly young children? Is that in and of itself, is, is that harassment and intimidation? Is waiting to express one's view at a school board meeting harassment and intimidation? As the Attorney General's memorandum made quite clear, Spirited debate is welcome, is a hallmark of this country. Um, it's something we all should engage in. And no, I don't think so, Ms. Monica. With all due respect, it didn't make it quite clear. It doesn't define those terms, nor does it define harassment or intimidation. It talks about violence. I think we can agree that violence shouldn't be condoned or looked aside from in any way, swept under the rug at all. But harassment and intimidation what do those terms mean in the context of a local school board meeting? I mean, this seems to, in the First Amendment context, we talk about the chill, the chill to speech. If this isn't a deliberate attempt to chill parents from showing up at school board meetings for their elected school boards, I don't know what is. I mean, I'm not, I'm not aware of anything like this in American history. We're talking about the FBI. You're using the FBI to intervene in school board meetings. That's extraordinary. Senator, I have to respectfully disagree. That is not what- Point the, me to an instance. The, the Attorney General's memorandum um, made quite clear that um, violence is not appropriate. Spirited public debate on a whole range of issues is absolutely what this country is all about. Um, then why is it being investigated if, by the FBI? If, it is not. When and if um, any, um, uh, situation turns to violence, then that is the appropriate role of law enforcement to address it. Um, oh, the what, memorandum what, covers more than violence. It talks about intimidation. It talks about harassment. So I'm asking you to draw some lines. We do this all the time in the First Amendment context. This is the, this is the sum and substance of First Amendment law. So I expect that she'll be available and, and willing to do it now. Tell me where the line is with parents expressing their concerns, waiting for hours in these school board meetings. We've all seen the videos. This has happened in my state. Parents have waited for hours. Sometimes the school board meetings have been ended before they can speak because the school board doesn't want to hear it. And now parents are told that if they wait and they express their views that they, they may be investigated for intimidation? I don't know who's telling them that, Senator. The job of the Justice Department is to investigate crimes. 
when uh, a situation turns to violence, when and if a situation turns to violence, it's the job of the Justice Department and local law enforcement to address that. The Attorney General's memorandum simply uh, asked the U.S. Attorney community, the FBI, uh, and their counterparts to ensure that state and local law enforcement has an open line of communication uh, to report threats, whether they um, happen in the context of election officials being threatened, whether they haven't happened in the context of members of Congress being threatened, which the FBI responds to uh, on a regular basis, as is appropriate. The job of the Justice Department is to address criminal conduct. You know, all I can say is this is truly extraordinary. I think you know it is. It's unprecedented. You can't point to a single instance where anything like this has happened before. And I think parents across this country are going to be stunned to learn, stunned, that if they show up at a local school or board meeting, by the way, where they have the right to appear and be heard, where they have the right to say something about their children's education, where they have the right to vote, and you are attempting to intimidate them. You are attempting to silence them. You are attempting to interfere with their rights as parents and, yes, with their rights as voters. This is wrong. This is dangerous. And I cannot believe that an attorney general of the United States is engaging in this kind of conduct. And, frankly, I can't believe that you are sitting here today defending it. I intend to get answers to these questions. You won't answer my questions. I'm going to get answers to these questions. Mr. Chairman, we need to have a hearing on this subject. We need to hear from the Attorney General himself. He needs to come here, take the oath, sit there, and answer questions. We have never seen anything like this before in our country's history. And frankly, I, I want to say I think it is a dangerous, dangerous precedent. This hearing on Violence Against Women Act will continue. Senator Coons. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you for being here, Mr. Secretary. I want to talk about the policies that have that have gotten us to where we are with our effectively open border. But let me first ask you about this. You said as recently as this week that the border is closed. Is that still your position today? Border yes, it, is yes, closed. It, yes, it is. Don't you think you bear any responsibility for the current crisis by telling the world earlier this year that the border was open? Your words were, "We're not telling you not to come." We're just telling you that we're putting a system back in place in which you can come. I mean, don't you think people took your words at face value then? Uh, Senator, I've never said that the border is open, and I've never believed We're not that. telling you not to come. How would you parse that? Uh, Senator, I've never said that the border is open, and I've never believed that it should be an open border. We have laws that Congress has passed uh, that are laws of accountability and also laws of humanitarian relief. You did say that we're not telling you not to come, though, right? You said that. You remember that? I'm sorry, Senator. I apologize. I, I... You remember saying, don't you, that we're not telling you not to come. Those are your words that I, you said in a press conference. Um, you, you, you said that, right? I don't, I don't recall saying that. I don't believe You don't I recall have... saying that? That's correct, Senator. I have never said. We'd be happy to refresh your memory for you and some questions for the record. I'm sure that that is interesting news that I'm sure everyone will. The, the secretary's just said he, he doesn't have any memory of making those comments. That's Senator, extraordinary. Senator, I have never said that the border is open. Here Let me ask you about this. CBP data says that the agency had 178,000 enforcement encounters at the southern border in April. It's the highest in two decades. Of that total, what percentage were subject to immediate expulsion? I will get that data uh, to you. I don't have that at my disposal this morning. It, it, is it 100%? Is it 60%? Is it 20%? Do you have any, any idea? 100% um, of families and single adults are subject to expulsion, except for those with acute vulnerabilities, um, and we exercise our, that discretion. However, uh, our ability to actually expel families under CDC's Title 42 authority is limited by, for example, Mexico's ability and capacity, I should say, to receive the expelled families. And that is um, what we are addressing as a result. Okay, I think, I think the number is around 60 percent or, or so are subject to immediate expulsion, which means we have a very large percentage of migrants who were permitted entry into the United States and are still here. But we'll give that question again to you for the record so that you can go and, and look it up. Let me ask you this. Uh, why is it that um, this week, uh, actually late last night, it was reported that CBP terminated a flight program that transferred families across the southern border for purposes of expelling them under Title 42? These flights were apparently canceled 
due to the pressure of left-wing groups. Is that accurate? Um, uh, Senator, we make our decisions uh, as we consider to be most effective in furtherance of our mission and not because of pressure by outside groups. I'd be pleased to look into the cancellation of the lateral flights and respond to you after I've done so. So, so the, uh, you're, you're telling me here that the ACLU had no role in the termination of these explosion flights? Is that uh, your testimony? Uh, Senator, uh, we are addressing the claims of the ACLU. The ACLU has claimed that our exercise of the CDC's Title 42 authority is not supported by the law, and we are working with the ACLU, um, actually adverse to the ACLU. You're if working may, with them, though? Um, if I may. Uh, Senator, we are uh, adverse to the ACLU. But you're working with them in this program. Is that why you canceled it? If I may, if I may finish, um, Senator, 